This screencast is to review the diffusion and osmosis experiments that we performed in class using artificial cells. So if you take a look at the setup, we have here an artificial cell that um, is porous to some molecules, such as water and very small uh, molecules such as dye, but for larger um, macromolecules, for example, perhaps starch, uh, it would not be permeable. So there are some rules to these artificial membranes, but basically what we're going to do, we're going to take those cells and put into a container containing some type of solution and use this setup to make hypotheses about diffusion and osmosis in this setup. And the first example is walking you through the color changing experiment we, we did when we took a cup of iodine and took a artificial cell full of starch and put that uh, artificial cell containing starch into the iodine bath. And for starch, you have to remember that's a chain of monosaccharides, a branching chain. So it's rather large. So as I said before, um, that starch is not going to be able to get out of that artificial cell. But let's say, for example, if you didn't understand uh, that starch was a huge macromolecule not, not able to get out, what would you hypothesize uh, would happen in the cell? Well, you have to remember back to uh, the iodine test. Okay, so iodine, when interacting with starch, results in uh, a black color. So if, for example, this starch was able to get out of our container, it would come out, it would diffuse out, and interact with the iodine, leading uh, the entire container to turn black, as we see here. So practice making that hypothesis and saying, well, if the starch can diffuse out, then the entire container will turn black. Um, hypotheses don't necessarily have to be true. Uh, so in the second situation, if starch could in fact not get out of the artificial cell, and if in fact it stayed in that artificial cell, what could happen, an alternative hypothesis would be that the iodine from outside would diffuse into the cell and turn the artificial cell entirely black. And in fact, uh, this is what happens. The iodine does diffuse um, into the artificial cell interacting with the starch and it'll turn the um, artificial cell black. So that's sort of a color, a metric, a color changing way to approach this experiment, one that we did in class. Um, now I want to get to the um, a different way, a non-color changing way that we looked at hypo uh, hypothesizing cell transport, diffusion, and osmosis in this artificial cell experiment. So what we did here, and this is sort of a blank template, again this is the container that we will put uh, different types of solutions in. This is the artificial cell that we would put various types of solutions in. And the way this experiment works, and if you missed class, uh, you're going to construct this artificial cell, fill it with a certain solution, and then you're going to uh, mass it on the scale. So your mass will be a certain um, measurement in grams. And then after the diffusion osmosis experiments, we're going to uh, see if the mass changed, if it went up, if it went down. And we're going to use this change in mass uh, as an indication uh, of, of what has happened inside the cell. So we're going to hypothesize what an unknown solution inside and surrounding a cell would do, whether it would gain mass or if it would lose mass. So let's take a look at this. Uh, the two setups that we're going to have, we're going to give you an A and B solution or a C and D solution. So I came around the room and I said, you are going to put A inside your cell and you're going to put that cell into a cup and surround it by B. Or you're going to get a B solution, put B solution inside of your cell and surround that B solution with A. Similarly, we're going to um, put uh, C solution inside this fake cell and we're going to surround it with D or you're going to get D solution and surround it with C. 
Okay. Now these are unknown mystery solutions um, that are either 1% or 10% in this example. So either A equals 1% or A uh, equals 10% and B equals 1% uh, or B equals 10%. Okay, so your job is to do this experiment, gather the data, and confirm if your hypothesis was, was correct or not. Okay, so here's what that setup looks like. Let's say, for example, if I said that A solution goes in your artificial cell and you're going to surround it with B solution. You don't know if A is the 1% or B uh, or A is the 10%. And uh, same thing with uh, B. You don't know if it's 1% or if it's 10%. But you can figure that out based on mass change. Okay. So practice making your hypothesis here. Say to yourself, if the outside of the cell is hypertonic, so if for example, in this scenario, B is 10%, making A 1%, what would happen? So again, let's put that cell in here. If A is 1% and B is 10%, what would happen? Well, remembering our diffusion and osmosis, you would see that this higher solute from the outside in that hypertonic solution would want to go in, but the opposite would be true for osmosis. So there's more free water available with less solute, so water would come out of the cell and into that hypertonic solution. So if in fact your final mass shows mass loss, then you can conclude that this setup is true and that B was 10% and that A was 1%. But in order for that to be true, you have to have loss of mass due to water molecules rushing out, going from where they are high concentration to where they are low concentration. The solute is not going to play too large of a role in mass gain or loss. So you can pretty much discount that for this experiment. We're essentially tracking osmosis in this artificial cell. Okay. Take a look at the opposite scenarios. Let's say that you hypothesized um, the opposite. Let's say that you said, well, okay, I had B on the inside of my cell and I had A out. Okay. What would happen in this scenario if we put this in there? If we had, um, and let's say that we said that B was 10% um, and that A was 1%. Let's take a look at this scenario here. Well, now we have our cell surrounding, being surrounded by a hypotonic solution of 1%. Uh, if that's the case, well then your solute is going to want to come out. That's fine. It'll go from high to low through diffusion. But what will happen with the free water? Remember, free water is higher where there's uh, less solute. So here there'd be more free water. Water would go from high to low into the cell. That would result in a mass increase. So you see how you can uh, confirm whether or not A is either 10% or 1% based on either mass increase or decrease? Going to advance it to this final one for C and D and let you do this experiment now. So think about it. Uh, set up the experiment. Let's, for example, say that you said C was inside. If you're saying C equals 5% and D equals 20%, if you're saying the outside is hypertonic, meaning D is outside the cell and C is inside the cell, then what would happen in this scenario? Uh, pause it right there and, and try to solve that problem on your own. 
we are going to continue along and uh, finish this final problem here. So if you have C being 5% and if you have D being 20% and if you're hypothesizing this you would expect to see solute go from high to low into the cell and the opposite scenario should happen for the osmosis component you should see water coming from inside the cell to outside the cell so for example if you had 10 grams to start you should see a loss of water and maybe see something like 8 grams um, in the final product due to osmosis of water leaving the cell so um, I hope that helps I hope that uh, gives you a clearer picture of how to use artificial cells in an experimental setting uh, using a dependent variable like mass. Uh, your mass in this case is dependent on the solution that is surrounding your cell. If it's hyper or hypotonic, um, that'll give you a better use of the vocabulary in an experimental cell setting. Okay, I hope that helps.